Hello comic book guys and gals, and welcome to Comic Mag Musings. I am your host, Bill Miller. I'd like to welcome you to a special holiday edition of my blog series. Just in time for Christmas, we will be reading Christmas with the Superheroes, the DC Treasury Edition from 1975. This particular issue is number C34. Now this is a full color 10 by 13 and a half inch comic book magazine. So the original art looks spectacular in this particular size. You get a little bit more detail than you would in your standard size comic. So turn the volume up just a hair, turn the lights down just a smidgen, sit back, relax, and let your imagination paint the holiday pictures as we read Christmas with the Superheroes. Our first story is called Silent Night, Deadly Night. And we see Santa Claus lying down in the snow and Batman arriving upon the scene. It is a different city after the first falling of snow. Familiar objects are transformed into wonderfully bizarre shapes by the mantle of white. Familiar noises are muted. The avenues seem to murmur. So it is this night, the loveliest, most magical night of the year. The dirt and ugliness are hidden, and Gotham has become the region of a child's happiest dream. Yet even in the midst of such beauty, there is violence, and a task for the Batman. For one man stalks the streets, seeking vengeance on this silent night, deadly night. Suddenly, combat. <laughs> and someone has a Christmas tree that is still tied up so it, the branches are together and he smacks Batman across the back with it. Batman falls back into the snow and then this guy snaps down a light of Christmas lights, a string of Christmas lights and goes after Batman with him. Kneeing him in the chin choking him with the string of lights. But Batman throws this guy over his shoulder and gives him a two-fisted punch. You've never taken me, except I got a bum knee. Then you're the thug I want. As for your fighting, you're strictly bush league. I was working till I got laid off working for a crud of Richard Lee Evans. Name of Richard Lee Evans. Evans, the toy manufacturer? Yeah, he let a bunch of us go in September because business was slack. Promised us we'd be rehired. Only instead, he sold the company. And the new boss has got no interest in us. You should have gotten another job. I didn't dare. I kept thinking I'd have my regular spot till it was too late. Betsy's sick. Doctor Bill's ate my savings. I'm broke. Betsy's getting sicker and... All around, the Christmas ain't merry. You've had a rough time, sure, but none of what you've told me excuses your crimes. you picked a quarrel with the world, when Evans is to blame. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Everything bad that's happening to me and Betsy is Evans' fault. I'm sorry, Batman. Boom! And he grabs a lamp, and when Batman's not looking, he strikes him on the back of the head. For a brief while, the Batman feels warm, peaceful. Then the throbbing begins, the explosions of agony. I'm happy. You're awake again, Mr. Batman. Betsy, get a knife. Cut these ropes. Batman is tied to a... Uh, what are those things called? Floor heater um, that they have back east. I can't, sir. Not yet. Uncle Tim said I can't let you loose till morning. He's been so good to me. 
since mommy and daddy went away, it'd be a sin to disobey him. And Batman's thinking, unless I'm wrong, Tim is heading for Evans with murder in his heart. And I'm to blame. I gave him the idea. Must escape. Prevent a killing. Radiator, that's what it is. <laughs> this radiator isn't fastened to the floor very securely. I might be able to force it free. Can feel the bolts giving. Poof. There. Next, I slip the bonds off the bottom and no problem. In my Bruce Wayne identity, I once visited Evans. I should reach his mansion in an hour. You're leaving me alone, sir? Can't you stay with relatives, neighbors? No, I guess not. Get your coat and boots and things, young lady. We're going for a ride, a fast one. It is nearing midnight. The wind from the sea bites. Cold numbs flesh and bone, and danger lies beneath the beauty. The pavement is a mirror of ice, whirling eddies of white blur and distort. Only a driver of uncommon skill can hurl an automobile through the lovely, treacherous storm. And such skill has limits, for on a deserted suburban road, stopped dead. I need a bulldozer to pass that snow pile, and there's no other access to the Evans place. I was unconscious for 90 minutes. Ample time for Tim to have gotten this far. Batman is at a standstill. He can move no further. Why have we stopped, sir? We're waiting, Betsy. Waiting for a miracle. Perhaps you have heard of the huge mansion perched atop this hill, fashioned in the image of a fairyland castle. Home of Richard Lee Evans, eccentric recluse. One whose whole life has been devoted to toys. Ah, my little corporal, you march as firmly as you did the day I created you, forty years ago. My own steps falter. I am confined to a chair, but not you. And you, my pretty, is any real girl's smile as delightful as yours? Doubtful. Doubtful indeed. Eh? Is someone there? I heard a noise. You heard me. The guy that used to buck freight for you, remember? Get out. Nobody's allowed in my castle. I'm going to make you pay for the misery you caused. Let me be. I've done you no harm. Yes, you have. Me, my niece, and plenty more. You live like a king. We starve. Well, Mr. Richard Lee Evans, all your millions ain't going to save you. Nothing can keep me from bringing your scrawny neck. So Mr. Evans is confined to a wheelchair. And he was... Toy appreciation was interrupted by someone with designs of murder. Within the mind of the Batman are thoughts as fierce as the winds that pluck at his garments. It's hopeless, having a prayer of getting Evans before Tim can revenge himself. It will be my duty to arrest him, and this poor kid will lose the last person who cares for her. Sir, listen, do you hear bells? Yes, I do. Look! A horse and an old-fashioned sleigh. No owner, of, no sign of the owner, but we'll borrow it anyway. I hoped for a miracle. I got one. Hang tight, Betsy. Horse, giddy up. The animal seems familiar with the area. He's instinctively staying where the snow is firm. And he's going directly toward the Evans mansion. We'll arrive in moments. And he sees Tim carrying Mr. Evans out as he arrives. Too late. There's Tim with a body in his arms. Tim, you fool, you'll spend the rest of your days behind bars. You've wrecked your life and Betsy's. Hold it, Batman, you've got things wrong. Shut up. I listened to you once, gave you a break, and you repaid me with murder. No, no, no not dead. I, I'm sick. Yeah, the old geezer's sick, a bum ticker. He needs a doc, quick. I was hauling him to town. You'd never have made it, but you will now. They put him in t inside the sleigh. I admit, I went planning to kill him. Couldn't really do it, though. I looked at him, skinny, sick, alone. And I seen he's lots worse off than me. I guess I've been out of my head for plenty of weeks, worrying cut me to bits. Like I wasn't myself anymore. Thank the Lord that's over. They arrive at the hospital. Into a sleeping city they race, past rows of houses where families dream of mourning, to a hospital. There to wait patiently in solemn vigil. Tim, you'll eventually have to answer for all you did, but I think I can persuade the Wayne Foundation to intercede for you. I don't care about me. I just hope Evans is okay. 
Gentlemen, good news. Mr. Evans has passed the crisis point. He'll recover nicely, thanks to you. If you had arrived 30 minutes later, nothing could have saved him. Even so, it's a miracle that he's alive. We'll discuss your difficulties with the law next week, Tim. Meanwhile, take Betsy home. Give her a Merry Christmas. Thanks, Batman. I'll pay you back. Batman loaned him some cash. You already have. The instant you chose mercy instead of murder. Goodbye and God bless. Now I'd better see to the horse and sleigh. Batman heads outside. Strange, they're both gone, vanished without a trace. The horse and sleigh were responsible for the miracle the doctor mentioned. wonder who owns them. And he looks up and sees a bright star in the sky. No, no second thought. I do know whom it belongs to. The storm is gone, and a star rises in the east to herald a new day. That is the end of that story, and we begin another. It is Billy Batson's Christmas, Shazam. We see Captain Marvel, Mary Marvel, um... What is it? That's their uncle, I think. Um, they're, all, they're standing around a Christmas tree, and Santa is there handing out gifts. From Billy Batson to Captain Marvel. Now, what could Billy have gotten for me? As if I don't know. At his office, Billy Batson looks at the calendar and sees a very significant date. December 24th, the day before Christmas. Tonight will be Christmas Eve. I'm having a Christmas Eve party at my place tonight. I've invited my sister, Mary Batson, Uncle Marvel, and Freddie Freeman for a Marvel family celebration. Mr. Morris, my boss, will be there too. Mr. Morris, you won't forget to be at my party tonight. No, Billy, and I'll play the part of Santa Claus as I promised. Take the rest of the afternoon off, Billy. You can go home and get ready for the party. Gee, thanks, Mr. Morris. Let me think. Did I get presents for everybody? Mary, Freddy, Uncle, Mr. Morris. Wait, I didn't get a present for Captain Marvel. Of course, Captain Marvel and I are the same person, but why shouldn't I get him a present? Ha <laughs> I guess I'm the only one in the world who can buy a present for himself. That's good. I'll go shopping here at Ramberg's department store. Mr. Ramberg is a friend of mine. Let me think. What will I get for Captain Marvel? Hey, that electric train must be defective. It's shooting out long sparks. Oh well, I still have to think of a gift for Captain Marvel. I have it. Captain Marvel's never admitted this to a soul, but there's a certain something he would just love to have. He never dared get it because he's such a big, strong man. So I'll get it for him. Ha <laughs> ha. Here you are, sir, all wrapped up as a gift. What did Billy get for Captain Marvel? Suddenly, fire breaks out. Help! My beard's on fire! Got to fling it away! Holy moly, the burning beard is setting fire to that tinsel! Shazam! By means of the mystic word and magic lightning, Billy now calls on his mighty other self, Captain Marvel. <laughs> you can't reach up there. Let me have the extinguisher. Look, it's Captain Marvel. The world's mightiest mortal puts the flames out, saving the crowded store from disaster. We're saved. Hooray for Captain Marvel. Gosh, thanks, Captain Marvel. You saved my store. Glad to help, Mr. Ramberg. Mike, you old fool, I warned you against slipping behind the throne to take a few puffs on your pipe. But I didn't, Mr. Ramberg. My false beard must have caught on fire accidentally. Rubbish. You set fire to Beale by smoking your pipe. I'm sorry, Mike, but take off that suit. Please, Mr. Ramberg, I've been the Santa Claus of this store for 20 years. Yes, I know, Mike, and I have to fire you. But this isn't the first time you nearly burned the store down through carelessness. I just can't take another chance with you. The old man shuffles off. Poor old fellow. That nearly breaks his heart being fired from his Santa Claus job. Oh, heavens, this leaves me in a spot. I have no Santa Claus for my party for the kids tonight, after closing hours. There are going to be hundreds of children here, and no Santa Claus. Those kids won't be disappointed, Mr. Ramberg. How will I do for the job? 
You had a lifesaver, Captain Marvel. Come back tonight, then. Always kind-hearted, Captain Marvel volunteers for the job. That gives me plenty of time. Hey, why shouldn't I buy a present for Billy? He bought one for me. Here's something Billy always wanted, but never had the er, nerve to buy for himself. What has Captain Marvel bought for Billy? Captain Marvel does his Christmas shopping. And while I'm at it, I may as well buy gifts for everybody from Captain Marvel. Holy moly, I can hardly see where I'm going. I'll say you can't, brother. Look out. But Merry Christmas to you anyway. Same to you, mister. Merry Christmas. At Billy's home. There. But Billy has to finish trimming the tree for the party tonight, so... Shazam! hum de dum de dum What fun Christmas is. I can hardly wait for my party to start tonight. Suddenly, Billy is horrified. Holy moly, wait a minute. If Captain Marvel promised to be the Santa Claus of the store, how can I be here tonight at my own party? Holy moly, Captain Marvel can't break his promise, but it means that I'll miss my own Christmas party and after all my planning to have a quiet Christmas at home. We won't even be able to open our presents for each other, and that would have been such fun. Well, it's time for Captain Marvel to go. Shazam! <coughs> Poor Billy, missing his own Christmas party. If there was only some way out of this. Why, it's old Mike. What are you hanging around the store for? I, I was hoping Mr. Ramberg would hire me back, but I guess it's no use. He still thinks I smoked a pipe and set fire to my beard, but I didn't. You didn't, Mike? Then what did start that fire? Holy moly, now I think I know. Come with me, Mike. We'll prove your innocence. Look, Mr. Ramberg. When Mike sat in the throne, his false beard hung near that electric train, and it set his beard on fire with those long sparks, see? Psh, psh, psh. Good heavens, you're right. I accused you unfairly, Mike. Please be my Santa Claus for the kid's party. Oh boy, now I can leave. Here is Billy's apartment. The others must be there by now. Shazam! <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody! Billy, we thought you'd never come. From Mary to Billy, from Billy to Freddy. You make a nice Santa Claus, Mr. Morris. What's this? From Captain Marvel to Billy. Sure, <laughs> Captain Marvel bought me something I never had the nerve to get myself. Er, uh, I always wanted a loud necktie like this. <laughs> now a gift from Billy to Captain Marvel. That calls for Captain Marvel. Shazam! Oh boy, I always wanted a tiddlywink set. I must be the it must be the boy in me. I must confess, I too love that game. And now, folks, what do you say we wish the world a? Eh? And they all say it in unison. Merry Christmas and a happy New Year. And that's the end of that one. All right, our next story is a new adventure of Angel and the Eight. It is called the $500,000 Doll Caper. As the Christmas season approaches, it inevitably brings with it a new atmosphere of friendliness and good cheer among all people. But there are exceptions. Out of my way, old man! At the taxi stand, some guy pushes past a gentleman dressed as Kris Kringle, or perhaps the real Santa Claus. So keep your eye on the bag of this ill-mannered character is carrying, for inside that single piece of luggage is a very special item, an item that will soon involve Angel and Sam in one of their most shocking and unusual cases, the $500,000 doll caper. And I believe this story is inked by Wally Wood. It was only two days before Christmas when a nervous, harried figure emerged from the customs section of a New York airport and leaped into a taxi. 214 Maxwell Avenue and step on it. Right. Watch out for that. It was a car accident. Driver, please settle it quickly. I'm in a hurry. What's the matter, stupid? You blind or something? Did you call me stupid, sir? I certainly did. I thought you did. Driver, please. This young lady, who has a green um, holiday coat with white fringe on it, punches him 
or at the driver who got out of the way quickly and hits the guy with the briefcase behind them. That was a very nice thing to do to my passenger lady. No, but it wasn't very nice of you to duck like that either. Later that same morning, you what? That's right, Mr. Stooge. I smuggled it past the customs inspector, okay, but then I lost it. You see, the taxi I was in had an accident, and you fool, I had you travel across three continents to bring me that diamond back to me, or to bring that diamond back to me, and you lose it within a mile of here? Boing, take him to the cellar. And this guy is clearly rich, just like Scrooge, but this is Stooge. Um, and there's a Frankenstein's monster type behind him, holding a salivating, growling dog. No, please, Mr. Stooge, it's almost Christmas Eve. Humbug. Now you listen, you, you men listen. Somewhere out there is a little doll with a $500,000 diamond sewed up inside it, and I must have it, understand? You get as many men to help you as you need, and round up every doll in New York City. Now get busy. Right, G. And that young lady in the green holiday costume is holding a doll as she's walking along the street. Hi, Sam. Have you been waiting long? Og on Daga, only two hours. What delayed you? I had an accident with a taxi and missed picking up Santa at the airport, so we'll have to use your car and deliver the toys to him ourselves. Ik ul u umbra. Okay, let's get started. I'm freezing. Ik uga ik ungik. Where'd you get that doll? Huh? Oh, I found it on the road after the accident. I don't think it belongs to anyone. Now let's see, we have to stop at about 20 neighborhood stores where they've been collecting old toys for us. Then we'll, deli then we'll deliver them to Santa's workshop so we can repair them in time for Christmas. Later. I'm glad that's the last batch, Sam. There's not very much room left in the car. Now up to Santa's workshop. Duke, look, that car was full of toys and dolls. So two of Stooge's men saw them piling toys into the car. We've been following those squares for hours, Duke. Why don't you stop them so we can grab those dolls? Because I haven't been able to catch up with them, stupid. That's why. That guy drives like a wild man. Well, here we are, Sam. There, it stopped at Santa's workshop. They're stopping. Let's go. Hold it a second. Look in that window. Yeah, that house is loaded with toys and dolls. Inside, hi, Santa. Angel, Sam. Come in, come in. It's so nice to see you and your friends. Huh? What friends? Right over here, Blondie. Yeah, baby, we've been good little boys all year. So now we're here to collect our toys. Now everybody stand nice and quiet like, get me? Okay, Scars, take those bundles from that repulsive-looking guy first. Right, Duke. Let me have them, ugly. And thinking to himself, I'd better do what he says. Now you other guys. And the repulsive looking guy is eight, right? Sam is Samantha. Who's called the angel, I guess. And this fella's eight. Now you other guys. And then he finishes his thought. And let them have them all five fingers crack. And he unleashes a huge punch that knocks two of the guys silly, knocks the pants down of one of the gunmen. Atta boy, Sam. Oh, okay, Sam is the ape, and Angel's the girl, I guess. Hmm. I'm against violence, but they were trying to steal our Christmas toys, and Santa gets in on the act. And belly bumps a couple of guys. Gosh, I'm glad this group is on our side, eh, Sam? Ook, eek, you bet. And the elves are... Uh, biting and punching and hammering away at a, another of the uh, crooks. Sam, someone's stealing your car. Oh, no. Sam, someone's stealing your car. Huh? All right, Dick, get your hand out of my pocket. It's another one of the gang. He must have been waiting outside in their car. Ow, that guy ain't stopping. We have a truck. This is danger. High explosives. 
and the guy that stole the car is heading right toward it, not looking at it. <laughs> There's a collision and a huge explosion. Great bananas. He drove my car smack into a truck that was carrying explosives. He ought to lose his license for that. Oh dear, most of the toys we were delivering to Santa were in that car. Anything left back there, Mike? Yeah, a big hole in the road. Wait a second. This is that out of the blown up car. Two of the crooks um, leave it. What is it? Just a beat up little doll, not even worth a quarter now. And later, at Mr. Stooge's residence. A Professor Sharp Eyes to see you, sir. Ah, good afternoon, Mr. Stooge. I'm over here, Professor. Oh, of course. I'm afraid I have some bad news, sir. Those hoods you sent out to snatch dolls have been captured by a couple of private detectives called Angel and Sam. Angel and Sam? I've heard of those two. They're forever interfering with people who are just trying to turn an honest buck. That's them, all right, but how would you like to have them working for you instead of against you? All that would be necessary would be to expose them to the fumes of my corruption bomb invention, and they'd become just like you, evil, dirty, and scrupulous. Enough of those untruths, but go ahead, see if it works. Later. Miss Angel O'Day and Sam Simeon? Yes. Package delivery? Er, over here, sir. It must be a Christmas present, Sam. I wonder who it's from. Probably a reader who appreciates the greatness of my comic strip. What the p As they open the package, a big puff of smoke. Eek! <laughs> Did you send this as some kind of <laughs> gag pump? <laughs> Eek, uh, love um tight. Cool it, stupid, before I wrap you one. It's working. And soon Angel and Sam are induced by the professor to join forces with the same underworld characters they had previously fought so relentlessly. And it shows them doing stick-ups and <laughs> taking dolls from babies and from stores. There follows a wave of doll robberies, unlike any ever before in the annals of crime. Annals of crime, let's go with that. While at police headquarters, well, you two guys are going to act as decoys for these doll snatchers, whether you like it or not. No sacrifice is too great for a policeman to make for the cause of justice. And it shows one of the undercover officers dressed as an older lady, and the other one dressed as a big baby being pushed around in the carriage. Now I've got to get back to my checker game, so get going. Rackle, smackle, gush, darn it. Rah. They're very angry about it. Psst. Has the kid got a doll, Sam? I've caught, yeah. Man, and what an ugly kid it is, but no wonder. Look at its mother. And she must be overfeeding this baby. It's way overweight. And as soon as he reaches for the doll, he gets slugged by the undercover cop that's a baby and gets hit over the head with a nightstick by the undercover cop that is playing the mother. And then the baby jumps out. <laughs> okay, Al, I got the whole other one. Better call for the wagon. Rotten fuzz. Check. So Ape is, Sam is knocked out pretty good and Angel is uh, being held. And they're put into a paddy wagon. Eek, oog, ek, kula. Ugh, wh where am I? In a police van, stupid. We were caught. Stupid. Angel never talked. Wait a minute. Now I remember. When we opened that package, we were gassed and it changed us into criminals. Well, if that rap on the head cured me, I hope it works for Angel. Boom! And he pops her on top of the head. Here they are now, Chief. And the police wagon shows up at headquarters. What? They're gone. And so are your promotions, gentlemen. So they open up the wagon. There's no one inside. Well, a flu well, a few blocks away. Now what, Sam? Eka blah block oog. We've got to go after the professor and Mr. Stooge. We'll never get near Mr. Stooge with that mob of hoods he has working for him. I'm going to get us some help first. And she enters what the kids would not know, a telephone booth. That's right. We're going to have to capture Mr. Stooge to clear ourselves with the police. Will you help? Oh? 
Okay, Sam, let's go. I fixed everything. You sure did, sister. And one of the other crooks who was stealing dolls overheard her. Overheard her. And he brings them to Mr. Stooge. That's right, Mr. Stooge. They were going to turn you over to the police. Hmm. The gas must have worn off. Have the professor spray them again. Humph. I don't think I'd like being gas again, so pardon my foot. And Sam kicks the guy. Boing! Bola, eek, og, bola. Boing? Why do they call you Boing? And that's the big Frankenstein's monster fellow that I'd mentioned previously. Boing! And he hits <laughs> Sam on top of the head, knocks him uh, halfway through the floor. I had to ask. Okay, Professor, spray him first, then we'll take care of the dame. No, stop. Is that him? I won't let you do it. <coughs> and Angel grabs his hand and he accidentally sprays Mr. Stooge. Get her, Boing. She's over there somewhere. Psh, what's that? Ah, psh, squirt. Black ink. Uh-oh. And Santa and his elves break in, and they're shooting Boing with a squirt gun with black ink. And they've managed to tie him up with rope. Sam, look. That gas must have been reversed back on Mr. Suge. <laughs> Just a little donation out of my petty cash to buy toys for the children all over the world, Mr. Claus. Two million dollars. Merry Christmas. And Mr. Stooge comes out with stacks of cash as Santa is mopping up the other two thugs that are there. Thirty years wasn't bad for the judge to give Mr. Stooge, huh, Sam? He'll only be 116 years old when he gets out. Eek a love, eek uga. Yeah, he's lucky he didn't get life. <laughs> And as they're walking by a department store with holiday garb and regalia, there's a TV on showing through the shop window. And here's a late news bulletin. The government of India has rewarded an American truck driver $10,000 for finding a huge diamond stolen from its museum. I'm sure the driver and his 11 children will have a joyous yuletide. And that is the end of that story. And our next story features the Teen Titans. Fanatic ones, Charles Dickens has been long dead, but his great books, his fabulous characters live on. In fact, his stories are so alive today that, the, that they keep on happening. So join you here, that fantastic foursome, ye Teen Titans, for a holiday happening inspired by the immortal pages of the greatest Yuletide tale of them all. Yes, deck yourselves with boughs of holly and park under the mistletoe most marvelous as we begin a swingin' Christmas carol. T'was two nights before Christmas and on the city's outskirts. Mr. Scrounge, couldn't we turn up the heat a little? A little? I can hardly work. Bah, humbug, wretched. This temperature is stimulating. Keep your mind clear and on your work, my good fellow. And they're in what looks to be a converted old bus. And it is snowing deeply. Does that make sense? There is deep snow outside. Yes, sir, Mr. Scrounge. I'm trying to finish up so I can have Christmas Day off. You want Christmas Day off? Humbug. You'll only waste your time and that good money I pay you. But, but sir, everyone celebrates Christmas. I don't. It's all humbug. I suppose you can have it off, Ratchet, if you keep at those books. The old miser, he's so stingy, he even saves pull-top tabs. But I need this job. My kid, Tiny Tom, needs that automatic wheelchair for Christmas so he can get around and have a little fun. With what Scrounge pays me, I can just afford it by working overtime. Not long after... Yes, Ratchet, you heard me. You can leave early. Go, quickly. Don't waste your time. Why, uh, thank you, sir. Scrounge must want me away from here pretty badly to let me go home now. That truck and those two crooked-looking characters. He doesn't want me around when he deals with them. Something funny is going on here. But after Bob Ratchet leaves the Junkarama, I think I'll pay a visit to Dad while he's at work. If nasty old Scrounge will let me. 
looks like young Tom is wheeling up to where his father's work is and where his father just left. Hmm, office looks empty. Maybe they're around back in the main junkyard. Moments later, Ah, boys, give me that long green. Such a sweet feel it has. Mr. Biggs says be ready for another delivery in a day or so. I'm always ready, boys, and I don't want to know what you do with this junk after I leave it at night. That's your business. Making money is my business. So long, Scrounge, and Merry Christmas. Christmas? Humbug. Good night, boys. Ooh, something real weird about all this. I better keep watching. After Ebenezer Scrounge leaves, now to turn on this gizmo and pull the big switcheroo. Every time I see it, I can hardly believe it. Mr. Big sure has a good thing going here. Importing junk from overseas and then turning it back into brand new expensive stuff that he can sell at big profits without paying any duty. It's foolproof. Yeah, and using Scrounge's layout here as a cover is foolproof too. That old buzzer will do anything for a buck. Wow, they're smugglers. And Dad's boss, Mr. Scrounge, is helping them. i got to tell Dad now. But when Tiny Tom does tell Bob Ratchet of what he's seen at the junkyard, Scrounge mixed up in a crooked racket? That explains why he let me go early. You better go to the police, Dad. Well, uh, I think, Tommy, it's better if I talk to Mr. Scrounge first. Give him a chance to explain. Shortly after, in, a, in Scrounge's old rundown mansion, What? You accuse me of criminal activities? You're wrong, Ratchet. I simply rent my junkyard to <clears throat> businessmen. What they do there is their business. But, sir, it's illegal business. We should call the police. No, it's none of your affair, Ratchet. If you had a one word to anyone, you're fired. And I think you'd better work Christmas Day after all so I can keep an eye on you. But, but Mr. Scrounge, I... Uh, Soon. I, I'm sorry, son. I can't risk losing my job. How can I take care of you? How can I buy that electric wheelchair for you? I promised your mom before she died. Please, Tommy, please understand. I do, Dad. Don't feel badly. Poor Dad. Mr. Scrounge has him under his stingy thumb. I need help, and I know just who to get it from. Not long after, outside Junkarama, four famed figures watch quietly with Tiny Tom Ratchet. And that's my complete story, Teen Titans. You just gotta help me. Help my poor dad. That is quite a story. A smuggling racket to turn junk into valuable goods. Using that junkyard as a base of operations. Hey, here comes a truck. And we see the four Teen Titans with Tom in the junkyard. It's those same hoods making another delivery. Perfect. This is our chance to check out the whole setup. Tommy, you wait here. Okay, team, let's make like junk. A few moments later, after dumping their load, now to turn this junk into beautiful, shiny new stuff, just like Santa Claus and his little helpers. <laughs> this is it, team. Looks like Tiny Tom wasn't kidding with that fantastic story. Clunk, clunk. I have a dump truck dropping off the junk in the junkyard. Hold it. Something, somebody over there behind that junk pile. Grab him. Got him. Let him have it. But the shadowy figure reacts with sudden fury. <clears throat> Ooh. Hey. He's too much. Let's get out of here. As the two confused hoods rev up the truck, we better tell Mr. Big that snooper interrupted our delivery. Bail out, team. Next instant. Mumbling man mantas, Robin. They're leaving, and we never really saw them switch the junk into new stuff. Obvious, but true, Gilhead, that lone intruder. Let's follow him. Kid Flash, get Tommy. Not long after. There he is, knocking on that door on the bleak old mansion. That's Mr. Scrounge's house. What could he want there at this time of night? So we have Tom, and we have Wonder Girl, Aqualad, Kid Flash, and Robin, the Teen Titans. What that, shadowy, what that shadowy figure wants will curl your hair, Wonder Chick. Boom, boom, boom. Ebenezer Scrounge, I have returned. Open up. Boom, boom, boom. That voice. No, it can't be. Go away, whoever you are. Boom, boom, boom. Scrounge, open up or I'll break it down. I, I, please, I'll, I'll open it. I'll open it. 
Jacob Farley, no, it's not possible. You aren't real. You're a ghost. I'm real, all right, Scrounge. Real enough to wreak my revenge on you, you old skinflint. Prepare to meet justice. That's a guy in a prison outfit. Black and white stripes. I'll make you pay for what you've done, you miserable old... No, Jacob. Please don't harm me. Please. Uh-oh. Looks like our cue, team. Flasheroo, stop Farley from shrinking Scrounge's collar size any farther. I'm on my way. Vibrating right through the wall, the teen speedster spins like a dervish. Pardon me, gentlemen. What the? Saved! And he gets between Farley and Mr. Scrounge. A moment later, the chain tightens. Right, Mr. Farley. Now, since you've obviously escaped from prison, you've got some tall explaining to do. I was Scrounge's partner in life, but now I'm as good as dead, a convict, because I took the rap for Scrounge. We sold some defective material. Someone was hurt on a job, and I alone was blamed. I didn't know the material was bad, but Scrounge had it fixed, so he was in the clear. Lies! I didn't know the material was bad either, but once it happened, I protected myself. Why should both of us go to prison for one mistake? You conniving heartless! I've had enough of this. I'm calling the police to come for Farley and toss you titans out of my house. Mumbling mantis! Shouldn't we stop him? Hold it, gang. We've got no choice. He's right. How can we? Farley's a fugitive and we're trespassers. Hola, <laughs> speaking of Farley, where is he? He went out that window. Come on, Titans, bug out. He's gone, vanished. Howling wolfish, what a wacko twist. Farley's story, Robin. Do you believe him or that nasty old scrounge? I don't know, but his visit here tonight gives me a great idea. Haven't you characters begun to dig it yet? Ebenezer Scrounge, Jacob Farley, Tiny Tom here. Yow, I dig. Scrooge, Jacob Marley, Tiny Tim. It's just like Dickens' A Christmas Carol. Merciful Minerva, it is. Well, I'll be. And we said it couldn't happen. It's exactly what is happening right now. Remember how the story went? Maybe we can take a page from Mr. Charles Dickens and get Scrounge to change his miserable ways. Listen, this is my plan. The following day, which is the day before Christmas. So long, Tommy boy. Time for me to go to work. That rotten scrounge making me work tomorrow, too, on Christmas Day. I I hate that old tyrant. But, Dad, you shouldn't hate scrounge. He's a pathetic man, an unhappy old guy. I feel sorry for him. Really, I do. You're right, Tommy. You're the greatest, nicest kid in the world, and I'm lucky to be your dad. See you later, alligator. In a while, crocodile. Soon, in the office of Junkarama. Faster, Ratchet. You're dawdling, wasting time and money. But, Mr. Scrounge, sir, my fingers are so cold, I can hardly write. Humbug, you're lazy, afraid of hard work. Many long, hard hours later, as Christmas Eve arrives. Well, good night, sir, and Merry Christmas anyway. Humbug, Ratchet, go, and don't forget to be here tomorrow. Must get him out of here. Another delivery may arrive any moment. When Scrounge is alone, huh. Gloomy in here. Farley's visit is shaking my nerves, but the police will find him. And those teen titans snooping around must get a grip on myself. Eh? What was that noise? Yeah, a phantom coming through the wall. Ebenezer Scrounge, I'm the ghost of Christmas past. I'll escape and yow! It's here before me. What do you want, spirit? To show what you have become, Scrounge. Once you were young, handsome, popular. A beautiful girl loved you. That photo, myself and Alice, she jilted me, married someone else. Please, don't. You're breaking my heart. Have you got a heart, Scrounge? A man who hates Christmas can't have a heart, can he? Please, Mr. Spirit, don't harm me. I'm just a poor old man trying to get along. Poor? You're loaded, Scrounge. Now I must go. But beware. Change your ways before it is too late. A few moments later, it's gone. That spirit, a chance for me to escape, reach home and safety. But as the proprietor of Junkarama flees through his domain of scrap and debris, Yikes! Another spirit! Who, who are you? The ghost of Christmas present. I'm here to show you how your stinginess hurts others, Ebenezer Scrounge. What? Who? What do you point at, spirit? Why, it, it's Bob Ratchet, but... I sent him home. 
he can't go home yet, Scrounge. You pay him so little, he must search for junk to fix his crippled son's wheelchair. Tiny Tom, it's not my fault the boy can't walk. I, I, it's your fault his father must work even on Christmas Day and can't afford the new electric wheelchair so Tom can move about like other children. What about your partner, Jacob Farley, taking all the blame for you? You had better change your ways, Scrounge, before it's too late. Please, Mr. Spirit, I'm just a harmless old man. I never meant to hurt anyone. Don't harm me. He's gone. Now to get out of here. Oh, no, another one flying through the air. Ebenezer Scrounge, I am the ghost of Christmas future, here to show you your own miserable future. Listen. I hear old Scrounge died. Yeah, good riddance, the old skin flint. No one misses him. Lucky he died now, but the police are closing in on him. He was mixed up in some crooked rackets. No, no, please. Just a minute, all of you. Mr. Scrounge wasn't bad. He was just unhappy. There's good in him. There's good in everyone. I felt sorry for him. Tiny Tom's voice speaking up for poor old miserable me, that sweet little lad. Just then. Uh-oh. The hoods are back in force. Time for Christmas Future to take a powder. And that's Wonder Girl, disguised as Christmas Future, who just saw all these thugs coming back. Huh? Mr. Big, he's here himself. That chick in the air. Gun her down. Next instant, <laughs> we winged it. Ooh, but but what's happening? It's one of them Titans, boss, and here come the others, clobbering boys. They were the spirits. I've been tricked. The Titans, clobbering. Those ghosts. They weren't real. It was the Titans. Howling hogfish. That junk. Scatter. Wonder chick. She'll be buried. And there's a bunch of junk that's getting ready to be dumped on Wonder Girl. But as the towering junk pile cascades down, no sweat, guys, just a little super speed general. And how about that for a Christmas car? Kid Flash grabs all the junk at super speed and rearranges it to say Merry Christmas. Groovy, Twinkle Toes, but who'll deliver it? King Kong? But as Wonder Girl is pulled to safety by her teammates, bzzz, they're using a giant car magnet. Suffering sickle-backs, they're yanking Miss Ponytail out of our ever-loving hands. Her bracelets, they're being magnetized. Holy flat iron, she's being dropped into the car crusher. An instant later, the girl from Paradise Island lies between the fantastically powerful crushing blocks. Oh, where am I? Great heaven, another moment and I'll be a dead Amazon. As the blockbuster power of the car compactor hits the gorgeous tightness. Merciful Minerva, give me strength. She's placed herself, her hands at one block and her feet at the other to try to stop it from closing in. Hang on, Wonder Chick. It's not polite to crush a lady buster. Robin swings in and kicks one of the thugs. Then as Robin quickly switches off the crusher's power, what are you doing, Mr. Big? That's my trap for catching trespassers. I'm activating it, Scrounge. Those types of trespassers, ain't they? As the bizarre anti-burglar device goes in action. <laughs> what? Something yanking me off the back rope. That crazy gizmo. Ha <laughs> ha. Let's see the boy wonder figure a way out of that hang-up. <laughs> you gloated your last gloat, gloater. Because I'm going to... Kid Flash comes after him. Yikes. It's like running on a treadmill to nowhere. Gets stuck in the mud. Next instant, ha <laughs> ha, scratch another titan. Mr. Scrounge, stop him, he's clobbering the titans. But I, uh, uh, grab him, oof. Can't in this oil, he's not sliding, he must be half eel. Correct, chum, half eel and all hammerhead. So they're trying to go after uh, Aqualad, who's stuck in a bunch of oil. But suddenly, moaning mackerel, what's got me? <sighs> he flies backwards. Now, as the junk tree claims another titan. Hold up, the boys. Prisoner's on that crazy thing. I'll tear it apart with my... Mm, eek, it has me too. There they are, Scrounge. Beautiful Christmas decorations. <laughs> and then, after they're trapped on top of this mound of debris, Tiny Tom runs into action. You think? I'll make you free the titans. 
and he rams uh, one of the thugs. Why, you little boys, fix this kid. Chrome my wheelchair, and the wheelchair gets damaged. One more piece of junk in this place won't matter, huh, boss? He is crushed. No, don't. I can't let them do it. Scrounge, you've released the Titans. Had a way to go, Mr. Scrounge. We're loose, team. Hit them. So Scrounge unplugs the power from the device that kept them magnetized to all the junk. And now they're free. You old skin flint, have you flipped your wig? I'll turn on the tree and... Oh, no, you won't. You're not turning on anything because I'm turning you off. And that's no humbug, Mr. Big. A pistol's fired as Mr. Big is struck by Mr. Scrounge. Go, Robin. Brock him and roll him, Wonder Girl. Robin, Tiny Tom, he's in the hood's clutches. So the Teen Titans are fighting the crooks. But one of them has Tiny Tom. But now, as two Titans go into split-second double-teaming, first time I ever torpedoed a torpedo. Cool. Alley you. And they've trapped all the gang on the debris upon which they were once trapped. Finish the whole gang. You Titans. Uh oh. Scrounge. You went straight. Helped us. What happened? You Titans happened, boy wonder. Your visits as the three spirits made me see what I was really like and made me see what a miserable old miser I'd become. Then, when Mr. Big's hood smashed Tiny Tom's wheelchair, I saw red. I became a changed man. Tiny Tom, who had defended a miserable skin flint like me. And I'm going to remain a changed man. Your dad won't have to work tomorrow, Tommy, and he gets an ice bath raise. That's for my old partner, Farley. I'll do my best to get his sentence changed. And so your dad won't have to spend his hard-earned money. I'll use Mr. Big's secret junk transformer to make your old wheelchair into a nice new electric model. The greatest! Groovy! So now, here's our Teen Titans Christmas card in fab four-color Titan scope. Send it to a friend. He might be an Ebenezer Scrounge, too. Wonder Girl says, Like my Christmas outfit, Twinkle Toes. Santa's Scrounge replaced the, the ones those hoods ripped. And then uh, Kid Flash says, Gear, WG. I'd hang out my stocking, but maybe you'd only fill it with junk. Gold-plated junk, young man. And Bob Ratchet, I'm giving you another present, a new heater in the office. Thank you, sir. You're real warm-hearted. Ha <laughs> ha. And Aqualad says, Hey, Robin O, how could anyone have as more of a Christmas as we are? Robin says, Let's let Tiny Tom answer that. Check, Titans. Best wishes to all for a swinging and groovy new year. And bless us, everyone. And that is the end of that Christmas story. And the last story in this book is a Superman story. This is a story that really began on a Christmas day over a hundred years ago, and, in a sense, a story that we hope will continue for as many years more, for what took place when Superman visited Central Valley on Christmas Eve, 1947, brought home more richly than ever the meaning of goodwill toward men, to the descendants of that old family who long ago founded the village of Christmas Town, USA. A tiny railroad station in Central Valley. The last train's pulling out. He wasn't on it. My grandson wouldn't willingly fail to appear. Something must have happened to him. If he doesn't arrive soon, it'll be the first time in more than a hundred years that an Osborne has failed to play Santa Claus in our annual Christmas festival. But you're an Osborne. If Danny doesn't come, you can play Santa Claus. My grandson is 21. The world is his now. If he doesn't come, a family tradition has been broken. And as Letta said, he'd arrive today. Maybe he's ill somewhere or injured. Easy, Osborne. The day isn't over yet. He'll come. Thousands of miles away in Metropolis. It's twelve hours to Christmas Eve. If you two want to fly out and cover the Yule, the Yule Fete in Christmas Town, it'll make a fine holiday feature. Okay, Chief. Later aboard a fast plane, and we have Clark Kent and Lois Lane. Clark, look below. That river overflowing its banks. Hmm, that's bad. We're over Central Valley, and Christmas Town is one of the Valley Hamlets. Lois and Clark don't know it, but Christmas Town is already under three feet of water. Alighting at the airport in the city nearest Christmas Town, 
Listen, suppose you cover Christmas Town, and I'll cover the flood down the valley. That way we'll get a complete story. Spoken like a real newspaper woman. And I'll be free to act as Superman. That part, he thought to himself. So Lois and Clark, hiring cars to part in different directions. Presently, I beg your pardon, but could you direct me to the mayor? This is Superman, asking a fella in a little rowboat. Superman, you'll find the mayor. Just leaving City Hall in a rowboat. And in that rowboat sits three men steeped in gloom. The festival grounds are flooded. And the waters are still rising. My grandson, where can he be? Mind if I row, gentlemen? And shouldn't you be preparing for your annual Christmas pageant? Superman! And this flood, Superman, how can we? Gentlemen, this flood is the very thing that can make this year's Christmas celebration the best ever. But how do you mean, Superman? I mean that we're going to bring a Merry Christmas not to Christmas down alone, but to all of Central Valley. Wait here until I return. Straight for the Timberlands heads the Man of Steel. I'll need plenty of lumber for what I'm going to build. This gives me the necessary lumber, and he goes whacking down trees. And now... Time out for a few seconds while I become a one-man sawmill and turn these trees into planks. We'll return the flood from a misfortune into a blessing by floating Christmas tree right down the river through the valley where it'll pass everyone working on the levees. Presently, look! Why, it's an ark! A Christmas ark and carrying the largest Christmas tree I've ever seen! So Superman built an ark with a huge Christmas tree on the deck. Gentlemen, Merry Christmas. This ark is open to all citizens, citizens of Christmas Town. They can decorate the tree and hold their Christmas fete on the board. But that isn't all. We'll sail down the river and spread Christmas cheer through the whole flood area. I'll make toys and things from this kindling and a regular Santa's workshop on board. The women and kids can wrap the toys in extra food packages and we'll distribute gifts along the levees. Wonderful, a moving Christmas Town, but we'll need a Santa Claus. Osborne, since your grandson's not here, are you going to play Santa Claus or not? I'm an Osborne. How can I refuse now? I'll go home for the old costume our family has always used. I knew he'd do it in spite of his anxiety over his missing grandson. Hmm. It looks as if Santa Claus will be the saddest man aboard our Christmas ark. Meanwhile, Lois, far down in the valley. Hmm. What's wrong over there? She's looking at a first aid tent. Are you hurt? Not exactly, ma'am. I just can't remember anything. Amnesia. He was struck on the head by a floating log. One of the men saw him and brought him here. No identification, nothing. I have a feeling it would all come back. My name, everything. If I only had some clue. Suppose I take him over to the men at the levee. Let him help with the sandbags for a bit to occupy him. He's all right physically if he wants to do that. Gosh, I guess I'm not from around here or someone would have recognized me. Now just forget yourself for a bit. The shock might be temporary, and if you relax, things will all come back to you. So Lois takes him over to help out with the flood effort. I do know there was something important I had to do, but I can't remember what it was. Hmm, I'll stick close. There's often news in an amnesia case. Well, Zeke, here it's practically Christmas Eve. I never thought I'd be doing this tonight. Yep, I guess Christmas is pretty sad this year. And the, am the amnesiac says, Christmas. Something's trying to come back to me, but it keeps escaping. That's funny, I thought I heard singing. Look, up the river, something that looks like a floating Christmas tree. And they see the ark, and it says, Merry Christmas from the folks of Christmas Town, spelled out in lights on the Christmas tree. An ark, a Christmas ark. Christmas Town, Christmas Town. What a story this is. Well, in the Ark's workshop, Gosh, look at Superman go. We can hardly keep up with him in wrapping these toys. Superman's making a bunch of toys with the wood kennel. We're getting near the levee, and you're to hand out the presents, Mr. Osborne. I have to leave now. <sighs> yes, of course. Sorry to sound so dreary, but I'm so worried about my grandson. As Superman takes his unnoticed departure, Look, a pair of knitted stockings. The toys are being handed out by Mr. Osborne and Santa Claus. A new recipe book and toys for the kiddies. Merry Christmas to all and a gift to every one of you. 
No farewell. The kids on the ark are singing behind us. When I phoned this story, you know, huh? That's it. I remember now. I was driving to Christmas Town to be Santa Claus. I let me through. I'm Danny Osborne. And that was the amnesia. Danny Osborne? You mean from the Christmas Town Osbournes? Yes, my car was stalled by the flood and I was hurt by a floating log, but never mind that now. That must be my grandfather. Grandfather, it's me, Danny. I, I had a slight accident, but I'm all right now. Danny. Danny, you turned up. You're all right. And I thought, but no matter. This is really a Merry Christmas. Clark went to Christmas Town, so he's probably scooped me on the ark story. But this is even better. I can see the headlines now. A Merry Christmas for Santa Claus. Where's a phone? And Lois runs off to get a taxi. Later, high in the evening sky and far to the west, is Superman. Just one last touch to make this a perfect Christmas, provided I can get this cloud bank over Christmas Town before the Ark returns. Made it! Just at the right moment, here comes the Ark on its way home now. As the cold air strikes the cloud bank, the moisture crystallizes and, which gives me just enough time to force the cold upper air down onto those clouds. There, a perfect white Christmas for Christmas Town. Why, Osborne must have found his grandson. How wonderfully things have worked out. How beautiful our little town looks tonight, Grandfather. The Superman flies off and says, And, come to think of it, what a story. I can just see the headlines. A Merry Christmas for Santa Claus. It's time to get Clark Kent back to the planet. Which brings us to the Christmas Day at the Daily Planet office. Not a bad Christmas party, but wait till you read about the one I covered in Central Valley. I didn't do so badly in Christmas Town myself. This is Clark and Lois swapping stories. Merry Christmas, you two. You did wonderfully on that assignment. Only one thing puzzles me. What's that? You each turned in a separate story, but they're almost identical. What's more, they've each got the same headline, A Merry Christmas for Santa Claus. What? Why, how can that be? I thought I had a scoop. So did I. Look, this is once that neither one of you scooped the other. On Christmas Day, what could be more fitting? I'll run it as one story under both your names. And that is the last Christmas story in our Christmas with the Superheroes Limited Collector's Edition Treasury. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope everyone has a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Signing off for now, Santa. Mag music.